Today I'm sitting down with my good friend Alejandro Acosta. Alejandro is a self-development coach from London and he owns a company called Odd Resilience. And one of the things that he's really taught me is the importance of being yourself and loving yourself and being confident with whoever you are. And I think a lot of people have a problem truly being themselves and putting themselves out there. And when you talk to a guy like Alejandro, you see that no matter who you are, no matter where you're at in life, you can love yourself and you can be confident in who you are. And that's actually going to help you in whatever you're working on, just you being confident. And so I really think you guys are gonna like this episode and really enjoy Alejandro. He says a lot of really good stuff in this podcast that you can take and you can apply to your life and you can become more confident and stop giving a shit what people think. And so without further ado, let's get to the episode. You're always going to be nervous. No matter what, you know, you're always going to be nervous. It's, it's something you cannot remove, right? Unless you're a psychopath, then you can remove it, right? Psychopaths, they don't, they don't feel, right? They don't feel nervousness. They don't feel the shit that we feel. You know what I mean? They're like, emotions? What? Right? Yeah, right. But, but, but most people are not psychopaths, yeah. right? Even though they might, they might act like psychopaths, they're not psychopaths. Um, and you, we have, uh, um, you know, the, the fucking the emotions of nervousness, right? And what I compared it to was, you know, in a car, there's a thing called a starter, right? I don't know if you know about this. I know, th- I know this because one time my mom, we were turning black from Mexico and the, the truck, we got stuck at a gas station because, you know, we didn't know what was going on, right? And we, were, we just crossed the border into the USA side. And um, we basically, we had to stay in a, in a hotel and, and the mechanic came up and he picked up the truck. But that's the reason that I know this story. And he told me that the starter is this thing in the, in the, the truck where it creates a spark, right? And even if your whole engine is working, even if everything is perfect in your car, right? If the starter, this little component doesn't create the spark, everything doesn't go, right? You ever hear the truck, it goes, <laughs> right? It's because the starter is not working, right? And that's what nervousness is. That, because nervousness is actually excitement, right? So you feel nervousness and excitement in the exact same way, right? The exact same way, you know, um, your hands, they get a little bit sweaty, right? You can get a little sweaty in the armpits. Your heart is racing. You have that pump of adrenaline. You get that blood rush to the face, right? You feel like you, you feel like the, the blood pumping through your whole body, right? You know what I mean? It's like, it's like fight or flight is, is turned on, right? That's what happens, right. right? And your fight or flight is actually freeze, flight, or fight. That's the order, right? You freeze first. And then you decide if you're going to fight it or if you're going to go away from it. Right. And in that moment of inspiration, in that moment of, I want to go do this. I want to go on that stage. Right. I want to, um, you know, theater, you know, you're, you're, I'm, I'm going to do this performance in front of all these people. Right. Or just anything, any really, really anything when that you have an, a moment of inspiration, you have five seconds. This is scientifically, excuse me, this is scientifically proven by Harvard. I read this in the book, The Five Second Rule by Mel Robbins. And it's not the five second rule where you drop something on the floor and then you got to pick it up to eat it before the germs take over it. <laughs> it's the, <coughs> it's that you have five seconds before you're, you tell yourself a logical reason as to why you're not going to do it anymore, right? So you have an emotion first, right? You have an emotion because we're emotional creatures that think we're logical creatures, right? So you have an emotion first. And next, you have to have some kind of logical region, reason to justify that, right? And what we need to do is we need to go five, four, three, two, one, and boom, just do it. Like a fucking like a fucking um, machine, you know? Because you're a machine, you know? You got to be that rocket that, that propels you outwardly, you know what I mean? Because nobody's going to do it for you. Nobody's going to 
actually do it for you, right? You know, if you want that thing that you say that you want to get, right? You need to actually be the force that propels you, right? You can read about how to do a push-up, but if you don't do the push-up, you're not going to get the exercise. You might have the knowledge, but you won't have the wisdom because the wisdom comes with the action and experience of the knowledge that creates so us into true. wisdom. Yeah, man. And it almost seems like you only get nervous and you only get scared before you actually do something that actually matters or like actually matters to you. So it's like, uh -huh, exactly. Before, exactly. Before like a date, before Spot a date on. you really want to like go on or before, before a business meeting that you think is super important, you're always going to get that, that fear. And uh -huh. It seems like, it seems like you got two options. You can either resist that shit and you can like try to fucking push it away and you can like wish it wasn't there. And uh -huh. Uh -huh. Just, when, when you do or that, fight it or fight it, right? You know what I mean? you resist persists. It just makes yeah. it. Yeah. Or not even fight it, like ride the wave of it, right? Yeah, and or you can, yeah. You there's, can, a, like, there, there's, a, there's a way to, to like, so what I was mentioning earlier before we hopped on here was about love. I think I, 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 think I remember mentioning this about how like yesterday I, I, was, uh, I was having all these like conversations and all these people were coming up to me because of that love that I was emanating, right? right. And whenever you bring yourself anywhere, it... Of course, we're being seen by our clothes and our hairstyle and the way we walk, you know, this, these, phys these physical things. But the thing that, you've, that people see the most, but even before that, is your energy. Before they even look at you physically, they feel you spiritually. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, man. People don't think about it like that. People think like, okay, I got this meeting or I got this date. How do I act? What do I do? Like, try to try to make themselves look all good. Try to try to fix everything external, and they never really fix like the internal. Right, the relationship they have with that fear, like something that's really uh -huh. yeah. Uh -huh. It's like change. going in, going into that fear. Yeah, yeah. Is, that, oh, yeah. is that what you're gonna learning, say? Right, learning to actually embrace it and like nobody likes fear, but like. I think I think the difference between people who actually just get shit done mm -hmm. is just they suck it up. Just like anything uncomfortable, they say, "Okay, this is gonna be here. Like, I can either uh -huh. I can either uh -huh. you know ride with it or I can not do it." And so, if you actually yeah. want to get shit done in your life, if you actually want to achieve shit. Uh -huh. You have to you have to change your relationship with that. And I think that's what like. Uh -huh. That's what I got from the video I watched from you is like, it's going to be there. Just accept it. Just learn to love it and do it anyway. Yeah. The funny thing with, with acceptance is that like acceptance fall and like peace, right. And these kinds of, and these kinds of definitions, they fall into a category in people's minds where they don't, they don't see that if just cause you accept something does not mean don't do anything about it. Right. Yeah, right. You know what I mean? It, it means like being like, that's true. Like I had to, I, I didn't become the person that I am now by being like, Oh uh, yeah, I'm a winner. I'm a winner. You know, they say, th they say, think positive, talk to yourself positively. Right. Yeah. But right. I did, I didn't get here by just being like, yo, you're, you're cool. You're amazing. You can do it. Like I had to be like, bro, you're being a fucking loser, bro. Get your fucking shit together. Like yeah. you're throwing, you're throwing it away. You're the one that's responsible. You're throwing this shit away, bro. If you keep doing this thing that you're doing right now, if you have the exact same habits, you're hanging out with the exact same people, eating the exact same food, doing the exact same shit that you've always been fucking doing. If you keep doing this, what is it going to be like in five years? Right. What is it going to be like in 10 years, right? If you're still doing these exact same things, like that's bullshit. I, I, so you had to accept to yourself that you're being a fucking loser. You some, at some time, at some point, you got to say, like, I'm fat. Like, I'm disgustingly fat, right? Or, or, yeah, that's, that's another thing I see a lot of too. Is, it's a paradox. It's a yeah. paradox because you have to be like, I love myself so much that I'm doing this. But right. at the same time, you, you got to be like, I hate it so fucking much that I want to change. 
It's a paradox. You always have to keep the paradox of life in mind. In every single thing, there's a duality. Every single thing. Yeah, there's a- right. Well, look at look around, dude. It's like so many people are faking it. So many people are like faking this image of themselves or like this, this image of like perfection. And you, um, mm-hmm. okay. Yeah. And All right. Like, yeah. No, keep going. Keep going. I want to hear what you have to say. Well, it just seems like people fake it so much like to themselves and to others that what happens is they don't actually like figure out who they truly are. Like I see this on social media all the time. It's like everyone who you image. who you truly are, who you truly are, right? Do and you, it's like mm. most people, most people have this like perfect image of themselves, but it's like they don't know who they truly are because they're not honest with themselves. They can't look at they can't look at themselves in the mirror and say, "Yeah, you're being you're being fake." Yeah, maybe you do need to lose your weight. You know, maybe your habits aren't the best for you. Habits. Everything is about habits, man. Everything is about habits. Like, yeah, man. It's like some people want to look good, but they don't want, like, to actually be good. Like, all these people on social media, like, flashing cars. No, th- no, this is the thing, though. No, this is what you have to understand, man, that, like, all truths are true, right? So sometimes people do become a bit delusional, right? They think that in their reality, what they're doing is correct. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You, have to, you have to realize that. Like, when somebody has a limiting belief, they think, like, that's the correct way to live. That's the correct, like, that's the funny part about trauma. Um, I'll call it trauma. We can call it something nicer. Uh, just uh, previous experiences, right? You know, in your brain. Whenever you, you have an experience, experiences that are very similar, your brain categorizes them together. It brings them in boxes, right? I'm gonna put this one here, this one over here, right? Do-do-do-do, right? So let's just say you've gone through a lot of rejection with women, right? Let's just say you just, you just had um, bad breakups, right? Where you completely fell in love, right? And then you ended up losing the girl and you ended up losing the person who you even thought you were going to marry multiple times, right? This is my story. If everybody, if anybody had that impression, this is, yeah, this is my story. Went through terrible fucking breakups, bro. Um, and I realized like, okay, like it's not just me. It's my psychology, right? There's something that I'm doing wrong. And what do I have to do? And, but the thing was, I, I, it became so terrible that like my, my, It was when I was 18. This was three years ago. And only until now, like, I'm really, I've been digging at it, digging at it for the past three years. And now I'm, I'm, I'm to a point where I, I like that I have closure for myself, like deep, deep closure, you know, because there's layers to it. There's so many fucking layers to it, right? You have to find the root because it's so simple. It's so simple. Like just find the root. Right. But it's so complex because the root is so deep. Yeah. Yeah. And basically, um, you have that, you have this trauma of like, of like, you know, I'm going to lose, I'm going to lose. And that's really, I was talking, I made a video on this yesterday where the real, the true fear, the biggest fear that you have is loss, loss of life, your death, right? And the fear of not, of losing what you have, that is the biggest fear that humans have at our core that is that it, that is it you're, that you're gonna die right so when your spouse dies right in a way or like so it, whenever you are broken up with by somebody that you love in a way it's like saying it's like you have to take it back to your tribes you know to your tribe times when you weren't loved by the tribe or you weren't loved by those near you right because back in the days the tribe the tribe times everybody would take care of everybody right um and if you weren't loved by the tribe then you would end up dead you know what i mean they'd kick you out you have to fight for yourself you don't have the tribe to help you out um and that's that's what happens when we when we go through rejection and then i went through a lot of rejection like like that and and i had this kind of trauma where it was like i'm not gonna enter relationships because because i fear i fear the loss of love right and 
I would even push myself away from relationships where, you know, these beautiful women, they wanted, they wanted to be with me. They wanted to grow a relationship with me, get to know me, but I would end up pushing them away specifically because I was like, you know what, I'm going to fall in love. It's going to, and she's going to break up with me again. Like, I was right. like and yeah. that's literally just projecting. I was projecting that. Right. Yeah. So, so it, it's like when you have that kind of image that you, those words, those thoughts, well, you're going to find ways to prove yourself right. You know what I mean? Yeah. You, you don't want to challenge your beliefs, so you're going to find ways to prove yourself right. And I just realized, like, it's not even true. Like, even if, even if uh, somebody actually doesn't, doesn't, well, I, I realized that the reason was because I wasn't loving myself enough, right? That's why my previous relationships were gone terrible, because I was not loving myself enough, and I became too needy. All right? Yeah. And... And so I had to realize, even when I came to college, um, university over here in London, I was 18. I didn't love my mom and dad as terrible as that sounds, right? But how the fuck could I even when I did not even love myself? That's so right. Yeah. You know, how, how could I love my own parents? No matter, they've given me, they given me birth, they've given me everything I need. They've helped me, they've supported me in my, in my career and all my artistic endeavors. They've been there, you know, they really do support me, but I did not, I did not love them. And I had to figure out how to love myself. Yeah. But I think the most important thing to realize is, yeah, the relationship that you have with yourself determines the relationship you have with everyone. Like you can't, I think Tony Robbins mm. says like, you can't pour from an empty cup. If you don't, if you don't love yourself, <laughs> you really, yeah, well, and that's that's really what I get from you, dude. It's like that's good, I look man. at you, and it's like, unlike everyone else, you don't give a shit. You kind of got your own style. You kind of got your own way of doing stuff. Mm -hmm. And people resonate with that. Like people look at you or look at someone like that, and they're like, I don't know what it is, but that guy has something that I want. It's like. Once you have that relationship to yourself, once you have that self-love, it's mm -hmm. almost like other people recognize that. And they're like, okay, this is, mm -hmm. this is how I'm supposed to treat this person. Because you, uh -huh. you kind of mm -hmm. set that standard in your life. And I think yeah. that, mm -hmm. that's, I forget what video I was watching of yours. But you said that. You're like, fuck opinions. Like, you're never going to do anything anything meaningful in your life if you're focused on others opinions it's like it's so uh-huh focus on the result so you know yeah it's so limiting mm. when you're constantly like what is this person thinking what is this yeah person? man this is so fucking funny bro because i swear i need to make i need to make a whole course on identity like yeah. hell yeah you know what i mean you know what i mean like um we are our identities. What ends up happening is we build our lives. We build our ourselves according to our, you know, our, our experiences. Right. And if you've been through, through traumatic shit, which a lot, every one of us has been through right. some traumatic shit, man. Like yeah. we, we tell ourselves, you know, because let's say getting raped and smashing your pinky toe on the fucking, on the edge of a doorway, you're going to tell yourself like, as humans, we're going to be like, yo, the fucking getting raped is worse than, you know, smashing your pinky toe. Like, you know, fuck your pinky toe, right? <laughs> but if you smash the fuck out of your pinky toe and that shit's fucking bruised up, like, your, 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 your biology cannot tell the difference. Your subconscious cannot tell the difference between getting raped and smashing your pinky toe in the wall because it just accepts and it does not, it does not reject. And it's, it just feels like pain. That's all it is. It feels like a terrible fucking pain. Yeah. Right. right. And that's what happens. Right. So all of us have been through some trauma where like people, people like to be like, well, I don't have any trauma. My, everything was just okay in my life. Yeah. No, it fucking was not like it seriously fucking wasn't. And you need to start questioning everything that happened in your life. Yeah. Everything that happened into your life. Like you have to rewrite it. You have to go into your memories from the past right? You have to re-experience those memories and you have to, you have to love them in a way like that's the end goal to love that past memory so right. that you can, so this, you can grow from it. You know what I mean? Like right. if you were bullied, like it means like you should have, you should have fucking stood up for yourself. You know what I mean? Yeah, like maybe right. you were bullied. They, they taught you to, to want to be stronger. Like, like 
anybody who teaches about anything is because they went through some crazy traumatic shit in that experience. And that's why, and they need to, and they need to share it now. Like it's through that deepness, you know, that destruction, yeah. you know, destruction leads to fucking creation. Like Japan, Japan after world war, world war two, that's when they really got their shit together. That's why they're on top yeah. right now. Right. <laughs> Japan yeah. is crazy, crazy fucking expensive because whenever they, they, they were, the whole city was destroyed and everybody was like, fuck it, we're all going to get together. We're all going to unite and we're going to make Japan the greatest fucking country ever. And that's why the culture now became where you fall asleep on the train and you fall asleep at work. It shows that you're working hard. That's, that's, the, that's like, you know, they're like, it's like a, a scene as a positive thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's wild. Man, that's powerful. People don't like... And we're never taught that shit. We're never taught like we're, you know, who, no, nobody knows it, man. Hardly anybody knows it. Right, right. Yeah. How could you teach something you don't know? Yeah. Well, it's 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 kind of funny. Is it's like why aren't we taught this shit? Like we're taught all this basic shit, like you know, math, science. Obviously, some stuff you know, like you will use, but mm -hmm. man, the way school is set up today, this is kind of why why I'm starting something like this. Cause it's like, mm -hmm. where, where was this shit when we were, here? imagine if everyone knew how to. It was, bro. It was out there already, bro. Ever since yeah. the internet, ever since the internet, it's been out there. Yeah. You notice, you notice how more and more people are kind of waking up now though. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. bro. I see, I see mm -hmm. more and more people, especially our age on our timeline. And I was actually going to ask you about this. What do you think? Why do you think that is? What do you think is going on? Bro, you just gave me a realization about myself. But let me just mention it real quick before I forget it. And but we're going to talk about the awakening as well. Yeah, man. Was that part of me was kind of like, like, I love to talk about these things, right? I love to like what like to help people other people realize, you know, the truth what I consider to be the truth, right? And you can like it or not like it, but you can definitely see that there's something about me and the way that I feel about myself that, you know, there's something powerful in it, right? Um, and essentially, I felt like I, I became a bit jealous when there was other people who were doing the same thing as me, right? And I guess part of that was just kind of my competitive spirit. But now I'm realizing that that's just part of my job for right now. Like, that's not my biggest purpose. It's a very big purpose of mine. Like, without a doubt, it's a very, very big purpose of mine. But it's not the biggest purpose. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like there's, what's, what's the next step? What's the next step? Like, just imagine a world where everybody was higher conscious. Every, like, so what's happening is um, love is at a higher, the hippies were at a higher level of consciousness than businessmen. Right. right. Yeah. The, the whole country, the whole USA, the whole world economy is what we call in an orange stage. Right. The orange stage is part of the um, the level of consciousness. Right. And the orange stage is very much run about business. Right. It's about like, you, you know, oil companies doing whatever they can to make money. Right. Like, people, like yeah. all these wars for gold, for power, all these killings. Right. Just for more power. That's 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 what happens in the orange stage. Right. Yeah. And we're actually we're a combination of all the stages. Right. Uh, just look up. Just look up spiral dynamics. Anybody who who who, who is like. Great to go deep into something real quick. Spiral dynamics. Write that shit down. Right. That is, and you look up actualize.org. You, you type that in. It's like an hour long video. I started with actualize.org, man. Well, you don't like it anymore. No, I love it. I love it. Oh yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. 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 Sorry. He's, yeah. He's great. Um, and basically that's spiral dynamics. Right. And the whole world is shifting to that level of love. And part of me was realizing that like, that's not my higher, your higher, high, your highest goal. It's a high goal. Cause we have three kinds of goals, right? We have like low self, middle self, high self. Right. But what I'm realizing now that's like, you might have like, let's say, one one goal here one let's say this is like your fitness goal this is your financial goal this is your family goal right that's just three different goals even within those separate three goals let's take the middle one the one that i just mentioned 
there's br that's, there's branches off of this one. There's branches off of this one and branches off of this one. Like each one of them are its own seed. Your low self has, there's different kinds of low self things. That, like let's just take the example of uh, getting fit, right? Deep inside, if, if, if everybody was totally honest, right? And they did not care about the people's judgment, right? Because really you're your own judge, right? You're really your own judge. You allow other people's judgments in, right? right? And we like to say that other people are the ones that are judging, right? But it's really you allowing yourself to be judged, right? Um, so true. And so part of yourself is going to be like, I want to get fit so that other people can see me and they think I'm hot and they think I'm attractive, right? Yeah. That's a real goal. Like, I'm not even going to lie. I have that goal. Like, I'm, I know I'm going to, girls are going to look at me and be like, yo, damn, that he's, he's hot. And even dudes are going to look at me and be like, yo, he's put a lot of hard work into it. Like, he's dedicated. He's smart in the way that he knows how to make himself fit, right? It's a real education. You know, you cannot buy, you cannot buy a fit body. You know what I mean? Yeah. I can't go get cosmetic surgery for a fit body. It's something you have to work at and be very dedicated. And that's what you see whenever you see somebody who's fit. So that, that's a lower self goal, from, a goal of mine and, and of many people like it, you know, and then a middle self goal can be like, well, I want to get fit so that other people see me. No, no, no. So it could be like, so that I'm healthy for myself and that I can live a longer life and I can have more energy. Right. That's still, that's a very good goal. Right. But it's a middle self goal. And that higher self goal is like, I want to get fit so that I can teach other people in my family how to get fit. I can be an example for people to learn so that I can create this domino effect of fit people all over the world. Yeah. Right? That's, that's an, an even higher goal. Right. So that's really, that's really what it is. You know what I mean? You have to, you have to break down your goals. Right. right. And yeah. they're all, they branch, they branch out. What's up? Limiting I beliefs. That, well, I think the ironic part is like so many people have those low self goals, like thinking everybody or, you know, getting, getting ripped, you know, uh -huh. just, so, just so people see you as stronger. I think a lot of people have those and they think like that's what's going to make them happy is just focus, focusing on you. Mm. But what, I've, what I've learned and what I've tried to do, because I do like yeah. when I first started this, all of my goals were like, get rich, you know, get, mm -hmm. get a nice body, you know, get attracted just so people would like me. Right. Mm -hmm. Like I just wanted people to like me, but the more and more, the more you go through this, you realize like those, those higher goals that are focused on serving and like helping others, that's what's going to make you happy. That's what's going that to make you the most happy. Right, yeah. I'm most happy. And it's like, th those small goals, they can sometimes hold you back. Like, really look at, like, what you're doing mm. and ask yourself, why am I doing this? Is it just to serve my ego? Is it to, like, you know, get more people to like me? Or is it for something bigger? And I think the more you, the more you focus on, like, serving something bigger than yourself, like Odd Resilience, for example, Mm -hmm. I mean, you're just gonna be happier, and the rest of the shit will take care of itself. That's another thing I've realized is like mm -hmm. focus on helping, and that shit all comes back to you. Like the more you know what it is, the more you get back. Do you know what it is on a on a metaphysical level? What? It's uh, connecting with a in a so basically every moment is a parallel universe, right? The reason for this is because. The moment that just happened, I can't go to it, right? The moment that's about to happen, I can't go to that one. I can only be in the right now, right? The, the right now, previous moment, future moment, right now, right? Right, right now is, is in the middle, right? These are parallel universes. So what we need to do is we need to align ourselves with a version of ourselves, right? That in a, we align ourselves with a better version of ourselves, right? And you imagine what that person would do, how they would act, walk, talk, right? How they would move within their environment, right? It's, you know, very theatrical. Life is theatrical. If the theater taught me, it taught me anything was that everything in life was theater, right? And we have to move 
Um, what was I saying specifically right before right before the theater part? I just I re, I theater like rushed into my mind and I completely lost. Every moment is a different parallel reality. Yeah. So we have to align ourselves with those parallel realities um, that we want to attract into, right? So like let's say if let's just say right now this is the morning, right? And if I decide decide not to wake up, right? And then I'm going to wake up a few hours later. That's going to mess up my day because I'm, I'm not going to be able to have time to, to exercise, which is important. And then now you, you missed out a day of exercise. You lost discipline. And you ended up now, um, you know, you, you go down a, a new path, a path that's like of a down, more of a downward spiral because of, you know, you waking up late, right? when you chose, when you had a, a, an earlier alarm clock, of course. Now, let's just say I did wake up. I exercised. I had my food. I had more time. Now I had, I had more time to work on, on my business. I had more time to edit videos, to create more content, right? To be a creator, you know? We have, and this, in this society, you know, we have people who are takers and we have creators, right? And obviously, we are all both. But I want my creator side to be strong. Stronger. I, I don't want my taker side to be 80 and my create 20. I want to create more than I take. Yeah, that's huge, man. That's huge. Yeah, that's a where, – where did you learn about that parallel realities? Have you heard of a guy named uh, Aaron Doty? Yeah, yeah. I, I did one of his meditations, and I connected with a higher version of myself. And the next day, I met this – beautiful woman who I'm still talking to now and she's taught me so much about myself and I teach her so much about herself and being with her has just been this amazing learning experience yeah man yeah when I connected with that parallel universe you know right yeah and it's like yeah I learned about that probably a couple months ago mm -hmm. and that completely when you look at like the law of attraction that whole process when you look at it from that standpoint and yeah, you want to experience already exist. Like that yeah. reality is already. Yeah, in. every reality. Oh my gosh, oh. Yeah, it's already out there. So all you got to do is like everything is already out there. Yeah, it's man. already out there. It's crazy. Oh my fucking gosh, it's already out there. Yeah, yeah. Do you it's... get it, audience members? Or do you get this? That it's already out there. It's already. If, out there. if you don't learn, no shit. Oh no. Well, I think we lost them. That's not good. There we go. Hear me? Dang. <laughs> yeah. All you need to do is align yourself with it, right? Yeah, man. When, and this is the thing you have to align yourself with God, right? In order to get there, right? The reason for this is because uh, fear is the devil, right? And it's it's not the devil that has the fucking guy with the pitchfork, that whole thing. That's just, just a metaphor, guys. Everybody, just so you know, these are just metaphors, right? You know, and the, the devil is just like a negative energy. It's really what it is, right? So whenever you have fear, fear is a negative energy, right? Now, negative is not bad. Positive does not mean good, right? But in the case of taking action, when you let fear sink in, it does become negative towards your goal in that perspective, right? In that context, right? Yeah. So in this case, the fear is the devil, right? And when you align yourself with God, right, which is power, truth, and love, and intelligence, then you, when you have those things, that is when you are aligned with God. Right. So how do you, what are some methods? Like when you say align yourself to God, what do you uh -huh. mean? Like, how do you do that in a practical setting? Uh-huh. Find truth, find the real truth, right? Like if you're following religion, look, 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 look outside of it. Right. That's what I had to do. All of my philosophies, my whole, my, everything that I, that is, that is so-called Ivan, is through 
the idea is taken from different people, right? People who believe very different things, right? And all I've realized was there's, there's different ways up the mountain, right? And I, and I took everything from all of these and I said, okay, I'm going to throw away some of this and I'm going to keep this, right? And I took the best from it, right? And that's, that's, what, that, that's what, you, what you have to do. You have to find the truth. And when you find truth, like as soon as, like if you have limiting beliefs, which we all do, and even still now I could say I have limiting beliefs. So what we have to do is we have to identify the, the root of the limiting belief. And with truth, as soon as you hear the truth, you're like, all right, I'm done. That's it. Like, I'm good. Like, you're fixed as literally as soon as you hear truth. And another, let's say, maybe another way to align yourself with God is to, to love more, really. To send out love, right? To, you, you have to focus on your, on your heart. Like, this is a very real thing. Because in your heart, you have a very strong electromagnetic field. Aaron Dottie, he talks a lot about this as well. And this is because the the freaking heart chakra man like the heart chakra is a real thing you know what i mean i had you have to combine that eastern and western philosophies right i have a chart on my instagram where it was like it was like maslow's hierarchy of needs and the chakras and seeing how they all matched up with each other right they oh, were all the same thing crazy yeah 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 it was it was it was wild as fuck when i when i me and my friend were in a phone call actually and we were just talking about this and we were like yo I, did we just discover some shit? And then we looked it up online and uh, dozens of other people discovered it. And in that moment, this is what I realized, right? The, the statement of the more you know, the more you don't know, right? It became a bit more in, more in depth because I realized that how would I have discovered this information if I didn't think even think about it? So I had to know something already in order to combine that. Right. And if you don't have that information, oh, fuck. <laughs> it was low battery mode, 20%. But if you don't have that information, how can you even get to the next level? Right. Yeah. So, so the, the problem here is, is from going to fear and going to love. Right. If you want to get fear, rid of fear, you go into love. Right. The, whenever you're in a love state, you don't even think about fear. It doesn't even come into your mind. It doesn't exist right? Rejection does not exist, right? And then, but the thing is, we have to go through steps in between to get to fear, to get to love. What the fuck? <laughs> you know, there's steps in the middle, you know, we want to jump straight to it. And that's the end goal for this in the end, right? But there's, there's levels to, to you know, to getting there. Um, so I think the first step, you know, we've kind of mentioned, we talked about this through the whole, through the whole conversation was, riding the fear right and when you ride the fear when you go into that fear of you know let's say rejection right one time i was in a club and i got rejected by like i don't know i was in the club though like for since it opened to closing right so well, that was quite a few hours and i was practicing i was practicing my approach right and i got rejected i don't know maybe by like 40 girls right which when you take a lot of reject, you say 40, that's not a lot, but if you're fucking there getting rejected, like it fucking, you feel that shit. You know what I mean? I, yeah. You're not, you're not even, you're not. And, and there just came a point, right? Well, of course, like I did have some good interactions, but then they ended up leading nowhere. And there just came a point where I was like, this whole time my fear has been of losing, right? Of getting rejected. So my intention now is to go to these girls and I'm going to get rejected on purpose. Right. And, that was my intention not to not get rejected, but to be like, fuck yeah, let's see how fast I can get rejected right now. Right. Yeah. Like it, there just comes a point where you get comfortable with the rejection and you're like, fuck it. Like whatever, let's go, let's go. So that's what happens, right? That's the next step after fear. You ride the fear. And then, and then that comes to that point where you're like, fuck it. I'm going to seek out that fear specifically. Right. I'm going to go yeah. after that. I'm going to go after that fear. Right. I'm going right. to go head, head first into it. And you start going head first into it. And then like literally uh, after I was, I, I, I was doing that for like literally just a few minutes, there was this fine ass girl that I had seen in the club earlier. Right. She's just wearing like this black, like sparkly crop top. She's wearing a skirt. She's, she's tan. She's got these white shoes. She's got this long, thick black hair. Right. Her makeup is on point. You know, she's got perky titties. She was, she was attractive, you know, 
and I'm painting the picture in your mind, you know what I mean? <laughs> and then I just tapped her on the shoulder, right? And she turns around and she, and she hugs me. That is her first thing to do. Like she said, oh, I want to hug this person, right? Like think about how much trust she had in me in that moment, right? right. Because I was so in love with the moment, in love with myself, in love with just being, no longer caring about the rejection that I was able to bring her into my reality and she wanted to be a part of my reality, right? Yeah, yeah. That's, that's huge, man. That's huge. Because most people think like eventually, eventually this fear is going to go away. Like eventually I'm going to, you know, mm -hmm. and eventually it does once you, mm -hmm. once you kind of, like you said, stop resisting it and just learn to love it. It's like, yeah. once you stop, the, the fucking ironic part about fear and the thing that like keeps everybody like the fear of rejection is probably the number mm -hmm. one fear ever. I think the thing that keeps people well, uh, remember, remember under the fear of rejection is the fear of getting killed. Yeah. Right? A fear of death. Right. Cause you, if yeah, you're like rejected, if you're rejected by a girl inside of the tribe, remember the tribe mentality, then you end up getting killed by her boyfriend. Let's say you went up to a girl and she's got a boyfriend already. She's got a, she's got a, a, a male caregiver. If she's going to go tell her boyfriend and then her boyfriend is going to bring all of her, her, her friends and they're going to beat the fuck out of you. And you're going to yeah. get, you know what I mean? That's what happens. That's what you literally think. That's right? what, yeah, that's the, that's why right before you approach a girl, right? When it, remember what I said about the five second rule and after the five seconds, you're going to, you know, give yourself that, yeah, that reason, that, that logical reason. Right. You're going to, you're going to look at a girl. You're going to see a guy and a girl together. They're, they're probably just friends. They're my cousins, their brother and sister just hanging out. But in your head, you're going to be like, oh, that's her boyfriend. I'm not going to go up to her. You don't actually yeah. know. You don't right. actually know that. You know what I mean? You just assume yeah. because you're scared of getting killed, right? But remember, now we have to take how do we get rid of it? We go into intelligence, aligning yourself with God. You've got to get that intelligence, right? And that intelligence is I'm actually not going to get killed, right? This guy might get jealous or you, you might even be giving him a compliment like, yeah, his girl's fine. You know, she's hot, right? Like if, if you think my girl's hot, it's a fucking compliment for me. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, of course, of course she's high. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's never, it's never as bad. Like the worst case scenario is never as bad as it is in your mind. Like the worst case, especially with women, this is, I think that's, we exaggerate, we exaggerate yeah. what the worst case can be even be. Like what the worst case scenario with going up and approaching a girl is she says no and you walk away. That's mm -hmm. it. That's fucking mm -hmm. it. But in our mind, it's like, Oh shit, like this is it. I gotta prove myself. And if I don't, I gotta prove myself. <laughs> right, right. I gotta prove this girl. And if I don't, you know, somehow, somehow I'm unworthy. Somehow, like, oh, this girl is, this girl rejected. Brother, me. Uh huh. That's the funny thing about being worthy. And the, this is what I realized that you're never going to be so-called worthy. And because you cannot measure worth, right? You really can't, right? This is a nose, right? Point to your nose. Everybody points to your nose. Everybody touch your head, right? These are physical things. You can feel these, right? You can measure it, right? You can't measure your worth. Yeah. How are you going to measure it with a fucking... I don't know, with a, with a mental, with a mental um, measuring tape. Like, and in a way, whenever somebody breaks up with you or you are rejected by somebody, you're rejected by your boss or you applied for a job, you didn't get it. In a way, you, act, you actually are not worthy for them, right? Because you don't meet their criteria, right? But you definitely will meet somebody else's criteria or you overpass somebody else's criteria. You know what I mean? Like, you're just, you're just like something, you know what I mean? Worth is given by, by other people. Other people will say if you're worthy or not, but you cannot yourself say, um, I am worthy of something or not. I mean, I guess in a, in a way, yes. Right. But what I'm trying to get to is more so 
you just decide if you're going to feel good or not feel good because you're not, yeah. you're, you're not, your past, your the terrible things in your past do not define you and your successes. This is what people don't, people are forgetting this. Your success does not define you as well. You know, you are defined by who you choose to be in this exact same moment because every single moment holds the opportunity for you to decide exactly who you want to be. Exactly what parallel universe do you want to align yourself with? That's so true, man. If people got just that one thing, what you just said, like you, it's your decision, man. If you want to be happy, it's a decision. If you want to be fucking confident, it's mm -hmm. a decision. Like if you mm -hmm. want to not care what people think of you, mm -hmm. decide, you know, it's just that we've decided so long that this person matters or this, how this person sees me, that matters. Like we've, we've decided so long that we believed it. I think if people like understood you create that, um, that's created. By yeah, yeah. I mean, we're also just looking at uh, as well as the, to the, um, to the council members, you can say, right. If other yeah. people are saying it as well, then it must be true, right? Yeah. But that's like, it, that, kind, that kind of makes sense. You know what I mean? Like, like if, if most people tell you to go eat at a restaurant, you're going to be like, fuck yeah, let me check out this restaurant, right? Yeah. But the truth, but the truth is, right, that the masses just follow what the masses follow. So you're, you're, that's the majority, you know? Like you being the intelligent one, you saying the things that might be politically incorrect to say, or you're behaving in a way that's outside of the normal, you are the, the fucking, uh, you're outnumbered. You're going to be outnumbered all the yeah, time, right? If you're at the top, if you're at the top, bro, if you're at the top of the pyramid, there's less of you. Than, so if like, like even the fucking, when Hitler Germany was going on, Everybody was like, yeah, it's cool. Kill the Jews. Like, don't even worry about it. Let, like, let's put them in the, in the cells. It's, it's, it, it's not even a problem. If everybody's doing it, then yeah, let's, let's fucking get Yeah, the right, right. But was it correct? Of course not. What the fuck? So just because everybody's doing it does not mean, and just because everybody says that you're a dick or whatever, does not necessarily mean that that is who you are. But at the same yeah. time, at the same time, remember, there's, there's, a, there's always the, um, as above, so below, we have to take into account the other perspective, which is if a lot of people are saying something about you, about there must, right. it, there, there must, there's definitely something about you that you have to look at, right? So anytime somebody talks shit about me, I have to look at it as well. Any, I have to, any, even if anybody talks something good about me, I have to analyze it and be like, is any of what this person said true? Right. Yeah, right. Right. Yeah, not yeah, even course. not even judging it. Yeah, exactly. But you're right. People put too much weight in like what other people think of them. Like the most the most important perspective is yours. When it comes to your life, like nobody's nobody's writing your paycheck. Like especially with you know if you own a business, if you're doing something where you know not a lot of people are doing doing it you know you gotta YouTube, yeah you, know, you, you start your own business you can't let opinions dictate your choices you're right you have to you definitely have to look at like okay does this have some merit uh-huh does this uh -huh. is this person like can i see where this person is coming from but like everyone's got a different perspective and it's like so many people look externally to say okay I don't know who I am. Who does this person think I am? And it's like, whatever, oh, whatever that answer, uh, uh -huh. however they see you, you're going to be like, okay, yeah, maybe this is who I am. And it's like, mm. if you had a lot of traumatic shit happen to you, if you had a mom that was like, you know, like just treated you like shit, like emotional abuse, and you had people treat you like crap your whole life, you're probably, That's what you're going to expect. That's what yeah. you're expecting to happen. You know what right. I mean? Yeah, and it becomes like a self-fulfilling prophecy. And it's like, how, 
how do you get people out of that? Because you, you, you don't know your, your life about you. you uh, basically, you built your life around that experience, right? Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? And if, you, if that's all the experience that you had, that's what you're going to expect, right? So how do, you, how do you get people out of that? Like for you, you said you went through some trauma. What were uh-huh. the steps of like getting out of that, like breaking that cycle and starting to create that new identity? Well, realizing that I'm not attached to my identity as much as like I am attached to it. Of course, I am attached to my ego in a way. Because if I wasn't attached to it, then, you know, um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't know I was a human. You know, you're only, you only own, know you're a human because of your ego. Like, you only eat, you only want to survive because you have an ego. And essentially, right, you have to destroy part of your ego constantly. You have to, like, keep letting go of, like, of certain shit, not be identified with it, Right we are identified with, with these titles, right? If you've been overweight for a very long time, you're identified as the fat guy, right? If yeah. maybe you were just, just a skinny guy, right? You're gonna, be, you're gonna be identified with that. If you're identified with the, per, with the, person, of, the person who gets broken up with in the relationship, that's what's, what's gonna happen, right? If you, you're identified with that. So remember the brain, it's going to try to prove whatever you think is already there. It's constantly trying to prove that to you. Right. And that's what, if that's exactly what you think your brain's going to find that you're going to put yourself in that, in that world. You're going to make that work out exactly the way that you don't want it to. Just by thinking about it, literally just by thinking about it, you're putting yourself in that. But so anytime you catch yourself, creating that, you have to observe the thought. You have to be aware, right? You'd be like, I'm doing this right now. Right. A way to train this is to just, like be totally focused on exactly what you're doing, right? Be like, I'm pouring milk right now. I'm pouring milk, right? Or you're walking, you're walking somewhere. You're like, I'm walking right foot, left foot, right foot, heartbeat moving, arms are moving, my body this, my body that, my breath, right? Every single thing, you have to have like a total awareness of your body, a total awareness of your body, right? And a total awareness of your mind, right? And then you become ultra sensitive, to food as well. You'll notice that whenever you eat this certain kind of food, your stomach feels a certain way and it doesn't do you good. It lowers down your mood. And and you realize whenever you eat this specific food, you actually feel, you feel amazing, right? So you become really sensitive, right? That's how you train yourself to be sensitive to it. Yeah, right. So what is that awareness? What do you do with that though? Like once you get- Uh Like what I do, I meditate. So I'll meditate Uh an hour a day and Uh that increases like, that gives me an awareness over my thoughts that like, it's, um, it seems like you get to a point where you're not identified with your mind anymore. You're not identified with your thoughts, not identified with your feelings. Yeah, man. Observe them neutrally. Mm -hmm. I'm not even identified with my name. Like, You know what I mean? Like, I'm, you just have to realize that even your thoughts that you have now, they're not your thoughts. Like they're like other people have had these thoughts as well. And other people have been through these experiences. Um, and you're not like, you're, you're obviously a, a very unique individual because nobody has the exact same fingerprint as you. You know what I mean? You realize that, right? Your fingerprint, it's a swirl. It's like the fucking galaxy. It's like a Milky, like the Milky Way. It's like a whole universe, right? Why? Because it's got that, it's got that polarity, right? You know, it's all universes, they're spinning. They have like the swirl. They have, they have the plus and the minus. One's going in one direction, one's following, right? That's what we are. We are the universe. We are the universe itself. We're the universe experiences, experiencing itself. Right. Um, and um, can you maybe rephrase your question? <clears throat> yeah. So I was saying, well, in terms of um, kind of changing 
changing who you are, like changing the person you are and changing your life, right? Because that's why I got into this. Um, mm-hmm. That's why I got into personal development is like, I want more control over my life. I want to, I don't like who I am right now. I want to change myself, right? Mm-hmm. And so, and I, I get what you're saying. Like the more awareness you have, the more power you start to have over that. I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it, dude. So basically, whenever you're, we're in the process of letting go of an old identity and of, of old energies that have been stored in our body, what happens is what we actually need to do is refill that, right? Because just imagine you have a cup, right? And this cup is filled with water. And now we're going to empty it out. We're going to let go of all that water. But now it's empty. And it's susceptible to being filled by something else, right? Something out of our control. So as soon as you let go of something, you need to get a grip of something else. You need to be filled in with something else. You let go of hate. You let go of of, of anger, of previous resentment. But now you have to tap into that love right after, right? Tap into that love. Tap into something beautiful, right? Rewrite it on this moment in the spot, right? Yeah. You have to do That's exactly what you have to do. Yeah. That makes sense. So get rid of, get rid of the stuff you don't like about yourself or rather become aware of it, Mm -hmm. recognize it kind of like, this is just a pattern. This isn't actually who I am. Like Uh once you get awareness over it, you can see, Oh, this is just a pattern. I've been, you know, ran under and get to a point where like you replace it with, a better identity is what you're saying. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I mean like replace it on the spot, on the spot, re- replace it. Like, cause you only exist as a story. And whenever you have sad thoughts, it's because that's the story you're telling yourself. Right. Yeah. That's just, that's simply how it is. You know, it's the way that you're speaking to yourself about your world and about your experience of the world. Right. Pay, a lot yeah, of us, we, become, we, we enter victim mode. We enter victim mode, man. Yeah. We're like, it's happening to me, right? Why is this happening to me? Why did I get rejected? Why did I lose all this money? Why me? Why me? Like, I, I want to have it already. The life that I want, I want it already. Like, we're, we're, we're uh, forcing it. We're trying to force the life that we want. But if we look at the power versus force chart. We notice that it is once you get into that power, right? You know, that power of mind. Most of the, of the biggest leaders in the world, they have not been the biggest and strongest, physically the strongest. That's just the way we used to be, you know, in the tribes, the, the, you know, even the gorilla in the animal kingdom, the strongest the buck, the strongest gorilla, that's the one that's the leader. But not in, not in human society. It's the one with the smartest brain. That's the one that, that comes on top. That's the one that has the power. So you need to essentially become smarter, right? Yeah. And that's how, that's how you get power. You have to educate yourself. Yeah. Educate yourself. That's the, that's the real sauce to it. Because you've been fed lies. We've all been fed lies. And if you want to get rid of these lies... You need to find out that they've been lies. Just imagine yeah. that you don't even know that a lie is a lie and you believe you're taking it as truth because your subconscious, it's been taking everything as truth. Your subconscious doesn't know the difference between a million dollars and $10. It does not know the difference between love and hate. It does not know the difference between up and down. It just accepts everything. Yeah. It just, take, it just takes it in. That's powerful. That's super powerful. Yeah, man. That's what keeps people stuck too. It's like thinking their perspective is the only way. Or thinking like the way they see uh-huh. Uh-huh. it is just uh-huh. the world, you know? And I think that's what I kind of want to do with this podcast is like show people there's other ways of, of looking at life. And that, that way that you look at life determines who you are. It, it literally determines how you act and what you get in life, you know, it's mm-hmm. like, you can't, you can't, 
create something like odd resilience. You can't put yourself out there like this if you give a shit what people think. You know? And it's like, I think that if people learned how to change their perspective and like look at their perspective just that, you know, as something that they've accepted, like you said, they can mm-hmm. change that. And once they start to change that, the mm-hmm. reality starts to change. You know? Yeah. I think I definitely do care what people think. Right. You know, because I, I, I obviously want to get views, right. I want to get that. I want to build the following. I want to build large audiences. Right. And it's like, it's like, if you like it, I know that it's good content. I straight up, I know that it's good content, right? So if you don't like it, it's just about you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and if you like it, well, then it means that you're aligned with it and you resonate and you're ready to transform yourself, right? But, you know, obviously, obviously I, I get some haters, you know, and I get some people who tell me that what I'm saying is bullshit, right? And they tell me that I'm just using clickbaity titles and and this sort of thing. But I'm like, you're just fucking jealous. Like, you know what I mean? You're just, you're straight up just hating because I literally know that what I'm saying is a straight fucking fact. And if you take this information, you're going to go somewhere. If you accept this as truth, you're, you're going to evolve, you know, depending where you are, uh, you know, there's, you might even have somebody who's maybe uh, more consciously developed than me. You know what I mean? Like the the things that I'm going to be speaking about, in one month from now are going to be completely different and are going to be completely more evolved. Right. Um, so I'm sure there's even people who, who see my stuff and they're like, you know, I, I already believe this. I actually don't need to follow this because I'm, I'm, I'm higher than this. And that's perfectly fine as well. You know, then you can be on your way. So it's just the words that I'm saying are for the people that it's meant for. That's really, that's just the way that I see it. You know what I mean? If you don't like it, that's that's cool that's that's i mean it's actually not cool for you because you're not going to benefit right but if you've already been here then you shouldn't be here either but if you're if you're ready if, if this resonates with you and you 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 hear you, this, this is the first time you're here and you're like you know what this is this is actual fucking truth this is this is real shit like this is this has broken me from my spell right the words that we use create spells that's why it's called spelling Right. And when you hear the truth, it undoes a spell that you've been chant that you've been stuck in. That, you know, you, this is a like, kind of potion that somebody used on you and you were you were manifesting what that potion was doing until you heard the truth. And the truth breaks the spell. Yeah. Yeah, man. That's an interesting way to look at it. It's almost like you've you've untied your identity to what you're doing it's like when someone hates what you're doing or hates on you and leaves a shitty comment it's almost like you've learned not to take it personally and you just yeah it's like, yeah that's on you exactly you know it's, exactly you don't exactly. like what i'm doing well that's not my problem <laughs> it's a personal problem yeah yeah, yeah exactly yeah man <laughs> that's cool yeah let me show i got a couple of other questions for you yeah how are we doing on time by the way i don't even know how i've last i've completely lost track of time yeah i think we're like probably 40 can, minutes in i don't even know can you can you can you see it i can't even see it on my no. side no honest honestly we should stuff. keep going bro we yeah. definitely should keep going yeah well especially you mentioned something about negativity i want to get into that because that seems to that seems to be one of the things that people like, especially nowadays, mm-hmm. everyone's so negative. It's like, especially like you're, you're yeah. London, so you're not experiencing it probably as much over there, but there's man, negativity everywhere. But yeah, with Donald yeah. Trump and what's going on, like we're all so divided. Ah, uh, yeah, we are so fucking divided. I, I, I kind of, I get where you're going with this, bro. This yeah. is, this is really, this is really everywhere. This really, this really, it's been happening everywhere. Yeah, why do you think that is? Oh, we lost him again. This, <laughs> this is gonna be the choppiest interview ever. It's okay though. That's what you gotta do. 
when you're first starting out, there's gonna be shit. There's gonna be shit you gotta deal with. So we wait. Maybe we'll pause it. Yeah. There he is. Yeah. Okay, a little technical difficulty. All good. So what I just say? I don't remember. So we we're talking about how um, people are stuck in negativity. And yeah, right. if we look at the power versus force chart, right? This is a this is a very nice chart. Anybody who's getting into self-development who wants to, you know, sometimes whenever we can physically see the map, the whole thing as a whole, then we can place ourselves within the map and then we can learn how far we've traveled and how far we're going to go. It's able to measure it for us, right? So when we look at the power versus force chart, we look at, at the bottom, we have things like apathy, fear, depression. The further we go up, we find something, anger. Anger is is a higher form of vibration than than depression right because you take there's a lot of action taken during anger but the thing is that's kind of where we're where, where the masses with the majority of people we're stuck at we're, we're stuck in anger and the more the higher we go up we end up going we find neutrality we find um rationality we find love we find joy we find enlightenment right i'm i'm those weren't all of those i uh i miss i definitely miss quite a few i don't know the power versus force chart by by heart but the way that i spoke wow. about him was, was in order yeah i'll edit it in somewhere for sure yeah 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 you can just do the whole screen and uh, as well you know people can still hear me yeah, yeah. And people are stuck in in the the lower ones right so whenever you see this you can if you, whatever emotion you're feeling, you could be like, okay, if I just raise my vibration, then I won't feel this anymore, right? And you could shift yourself into a higher conscious instantly just by thinking about it. Yeah, that's one of the shortcuts too, is once I, once I figured out like, if you want to stop being sad, you want to stop being scared, you want to stop being negative, you have the mm -hmm. power to actually raise your vibration and just by doing that it it pretty much takes care of the rest you know it's like once you're once you're resonating in a higher vibration you're right fear doesn't exist anger doesn't exist so uh -huh. what do you do to raise your vibration like what are the what are some of the things you do on a daily basis like have yeah 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 well um, something, something I kind of wanted to really clarify real quick was that whenever you reach those, those, those moments of flow, that's when you have to enter a flow state. That's whenever you don't really think about fear. The fear doesn't come in, but most of the time we're not in a flow state. If we're being real. We're not going to be, we're not going to be in that flow state all the time. You know, that would be so intense. You know, you wouldn't be able to function in society if you were always in a flow state, but what we can do is is um tap into 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 courage right and courage you know there's a difference between courage and fear and in fear you piss your pants but in courage you piss your pants and you still do it anyway <laughs> you know what i mean you're walking around with your fucking with your piss pants all over the fucking world but you're still doing it right that's what courage is we have to tap into courage and that's how you start really taking that action you know um it, it's it's courageous you know that's exactly what you have to be doing be, be be like fuck it right fuck it whatever happens next fuck it right that's right. that's some that's, that's a model to live by fuck it let's go fuck it yeah yeah yeah, yeah. what do you do but for like negativity like let's say you're in an argument or mm. you see on facebook see you see something that triggers you how do you get out of that? How do you, cause it's got like a, a power, you know, it, it uh -huh. pulls you in. That's why yeah. CNN and Fox news, all this shit is so popular. Cause it's got a way of like drawing people in, you know? Yeah. So how do you, so, how do you not engage in that? Well, first it, it's about the awareness, right? You have to realize that that's what's being done onto you. You know what I mean? Like, when you go to a grocery store, if you notice, 
like start to notice how many spots in the grocery store they have like this sugary snacks, right? Do you see them spread all over the store, right? It's a trick, right? To get you to get them, right? But sugary snacks aren't the best thing. So once you have that awareness, right? If you have an awareness that what somebody's telling you, they're specifically telling you to trigger you in a specific way, then you don't allow it to get you, right? If you're in the middle of an argument, like my, before anything, I even try to prevent arguments through my communication, through understanding, you know, and being like, you know what, this person is going to, this person feels this way because of this. And that's totally fine. Like, I'm not going to force them out of it, but I'm going to stay calm and I'm going to try to, to win this um, rationally, right? And I'm going to try to win this through love, right? Like the other day, somebody was trying to fight me straight up in the, right before we went into the train. And all I did was like, I was looking in one direction and then, and then this guy kind of like came into my field of view and he was like, he was like, I don't know. I don't even know what the fuck he was saying, but he was saying like, like, like he was doing this with his body, like, you know, like square up, whatever kind of shit. And all I did was like, I realized he's, I was like, in that moment, I was like, yo, this guy's either fucking drunk or on drugs or some shit. Um, like what, what I can do is. I could try to be more aggressive and that would be fucking, I would just make it worse. Right. Like yeah. he's looking for something. He's that person who's getting into an argument with you. They're looking to trigger you the way that they feel. That's exactly what they're doing. Right. So you have to be like, in that moment I went, I was like, I just smiled at him. I just like, I gave him a big ass smile. And I looked him in the eye. I was like, yeah, yeah. And then I just, I just turned around and I went into the train. Right. And he didn't do anything after that, you know? Yeah. And th th that's how you neutralize it. You know what I mean? You, you enter into that understanding of how they're feeling, understanding that they want to, they're looking for you to feel the way that they're feeling. You know what I mean? Whenever somebody's feeling shitty, they tell you shitty things about yourself, right? Because yeah. they want you to feel that. They want you to feel that way. Right. That energy right? wants to spread. Yeah. And, and, and people, when, are, when they're happy, they're going to tell you things that are going to make you happy because they want other people to make you to feel like you. You know what I mean? If I feel like, if I feel fucking love, right? You want other people to feel love. And then those people are attracted to that love because they want to feel that love. Yeah. People are cra craving that love. Yeah. So it's almost like at any energy is contagious, whether it's hate, and, love. Uh-huh. Yep. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Because it's, it's so, it's so easy to be like, to try to out macho that guy and be like, oh, okay. You want to fight? Well, fuck you. Let's fight. You know, that's, that's the nasty. Yeah, bitch. Yeah, react. bitch. Right. I've been training, bitch. Let's go. <laughs> I've been training, bitch. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And you think like, oh, if I do this, then I'm stronger, right? Like, um, but that's the opposite. Because it, it's like, you're not doing yourself any good. Like, you don't want to be angry. Yeah, exactly. Like, why would I even need to be angry? Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. It, it, would, it, would, it would end up hurting me. You know, right, right. Um, so it's like you almost have to, you have to become, you have to shield yourself from other people's energy. Like, have you heard of uh, what's that? Yeah, empath, yeah, an empath. Uh huh, uh huh. I think well, most, you absorb energy, right? Yeah, I think a lot of people actually are empaths. A lot of people absorb other people's energy. Uh huh. And it's like. I mean, everybody's absorbing each other's energy. You know, when somebody's yeah. feeling, when somebody's, you, whenever that, like in your mind, you're like, oh, did I make that weird? When you're asking yourself, did I make that weird? Yes, you did make it weird. If you're yeah. a question, if you're asking it, that's the other the person felt it as well. Yeah. Right. And energy is like a punch, right? If you're in the way of a punch, no matter where the, like how fucking strong you are, if you're in the way of a punch, you're going to feel the punch, Right. So if, if you're in the way of that energy, whatever energy it is, it's go you're going to feel it, right? And the thing is, in that same way, you have to, when you're, let's say you're bigger than the person, you're not just sort of metaphorically bigger than them. You're in a way, in a physical way, in a metaphysical way, you are bigger than them because you understand their thoughts, 
right? Like, let's say, let's say we have like a midget and a midget punches Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Like, The Rock Johnson, like, let's just say he punches him in the leg. The Rock Johnson, that guy's huge. He's going to turn around. He's going to be like, what? <laughs> what the, <laughs> what the fuck happened? <laughs> what happened here? You know what I mean? If yeah. it was a baby, if, like, if a fucking baby punches you or kicks you, if, if it's as hard as the baby can go, you're still going to be like, uh, you know what I mean? Like, that's cute. You know what I mean? So that's what yeah. it's like when, whenever you're emotionally stronger, whenever you understand other people's thoughts, you become bigger than them in a way. So that's why I believe that we're all equal because, you know, you know, you and I are the same amount of human. You and that hot ass girl in the magazine, you and Arnold Schwarzenegger and the fucking president, you're the same amount of human, right? Like yeah. you can't be more human than this, another fucking human, right? But you can definitely be more than somebody else on a different category. Yeah. You can be more aware. And I think awareness really is power. Awareness. You're aware, you have that choice. You can say, huh, if I, if I engage with this guy, like, hey, I'm going to be pissed off the rest of the day. You know, I might get hurt. <laughs> like, yeah. logic starts to come into the equation. Uh-huh. And, uh-huh. yeah, man. Because oh, anger is below logic. Anger is below logic. Yeah. Right. And right. now, now that I'm, I'm really retrospecting, you mentioned how at first, like you, you get to a point where you're like, I have to be logical about this. Right. And then I realized I returned it with love. I returned his expression of anger with love, which is even higher than rationality. Right. Yeah. So I'm, I'm realizing that in that moment, you go through all the emotions instantly. You take it from anger and then you move it all the way through the spectrum until you get to that point. Right. Right. Well, a lot of people that's don't. How, that's, that's what it's like to feel, to feel something. Right. A lot of people don't realize, like, they have that power. A lot of people don't realize, like, if you're putting out love, it's, it's got to come back. It has to come back. Like, that, that's mm -hmm. what law of attraction is, you know. The more you put out or whatever you put out, you're going to get back. So, it's yeah. Like, in a way, when you're engaging in all this negative shit, when you're getting, and this was a huge one of mine. I used to get on Facebook battles, you know, like in the comments. <laughs> shit that never, never applied to me. But I would just get like, so like, I got to prove them wrong. And I got to, yeah. and, and I say this, this is, this is going to really get to it. But, God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> this is not working out. That's okay. There we go. What's up, man? I have no clue as to why it keeps doing that. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if maybe the recording is stopping. I think no, the recording, recording is still going. The recording yeah. is still going. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll chop all, all this shit up. But yeah, that's that's chill. That's all right. I don't. I think it's a sign that we need to wrap up. Yeah, Honestly, yeah. I, I think it's I think it's a sign. <clears throat> this was good, man. This was really good. Uh -huh. let's, let's, try to, let's try to do like an outro just so I can chop this up. Mm -hmm. Make it kind of smooth. Mm -hmm. but yeah, I think for the outro. Let me just ask you one more question to wrap it up. Mm -hmm. So with all this being said, with all this that you've learned in like applied your life what do you think the most important what do you think the three main things that really changed your life like what are the main the three main lessons that you've taken and like really gotten progress in your life yeah one love yourself two dislike if there's something you dislike about yourself, you reject it. You reject the fuck out of it. I'm not going to accept this, right? And three, be the best, fuck the rest. <laughs> I like that. I like that, man. Yeah. Confidence, fucking powerful. So powerful. Yeah. Tr tr trust the process. Be the best, fuck the rest is more like saying trust the process, like, if, 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 if you have the goal in mind 
And if you're taking the steps in action, you're going to get there, right? You're going to get the result that you want, right? Yeah. If you have, if the, if you have the result in mind, if you're, if you're being consistent with your steps, with your habits, you're going to get it. It's the fucking, it's just, it's just a matter of time. Just be patient with it. Be patient with it. Yeah, man. I fucking love it. I love it. Alejandro. Thanks, man. Yeah. I appreciate it, bro. This, this was a good, this was a good first podcast. I think this is. Definitely. I more, enjoyed it. Yeah, man. Me too. Got to do this again sometime, man. Uh-huh. Let me, cool, what, let me, let me know. Yeah. Let me know. So if people want to find you, what are you, what are you working on right now? Where can they find you? Uh, you can find me on Instagram at ODD dot R I S L I S E N S, which spells out odd resilience, right? Which basically means like odd to stand out, to be the different one, be okay being the black sheep, right? And, and resilience, you know, keep fighting it, keep fighting it, you know, keep going against it. You're going to get hit. You're going to get knocked down. Keep going at it. My YouTube as well is Odd Resilience. And you can find me on Facebook as Alejandro Acosta. You just type in Austin, you type in London probably, and, and you'll find me, right? But the best is Instagram because I post the most constant there. Uh, and then YouTube as well. I post long videos in the YouTube, which more in depth. Yeah, man. I like your Instagram because it's quick, quick, like three minute videos. And it's like, just like mm. a simple concept, but it always resonates. It always makes sense. So, mm. Yeah, man. This was awesome. Thank you, bro. All right. Thank you very much, man. I'll see you next time. Yes, sir. Alejandro. Have a good night, bro.